come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. There are many things we believe whose existence can in no way be proven. The possibility of peace in the world is one. Man's inborn goodness is another. Or do I repeat myself? The beneficence of nature, the infinite genius of science, the feasibility of a utopian state, and the most abiding faith of all, the reality of a supreme God and man's undying soul. Oh, the darkness. The deep, impenetrable darkness. Like a starless night on a country road and no moon. No, darker than that. A tunnel that stretches on and on, endlessly on. Black as ink, as coal, as pitch. But wait. Wait, look there. Look. Look there. Our mystery drama, Body and Soul, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Preoccupation with the human soul is as old as Egypt, and probably older. Before men had devised a system of writing to express their thoughts and feelings, they may well have thought and felt that each one of them possessed a something quite extraneous to his body, even as we do now. And that is why this story is called Body and Soul. What a trashy book, honest. Who is that woman? She's sitting in front of the window reading. Nothing but sex, sex, sex. She's holding a book in front of her face. How very strange I can see her face right through the book. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. And I can see the back of the chair and the wall behind that. Now, isn't that odd? I wonder if the mail has arrived. You think it has, Mrs. Burton? And through the wall? Mrs. Burton... You think the mail has come yet? I can see through the book, through her head, through the chair, through the wall. I... I can see the vines growing up outside of the wall. I can see the top of the mulberry tree. Now, isn't that odd that I should be able to do that? You asleep, Mrs. Burton? Doesn't seem odd, though. It seems very... Very natural. Well, you just go ahead and sleep. You need all the rest you can get. The most natural thing in the world. Back in a jiffy. I'm glad she's gone. She's lighting a cigarette. Why did she say she was going to see about the mail? I'm glad she left the room because... I seem to be... Waiting for something. Well, that sound. What was it? Where did it come from? Why did I hear it in my left ear and not in my right ear? That's strange. But it's not strange. It's it's right. It's really right. <laughs> my hair is getting thin in back. From lying on my back for so long, I suppose. Why, look at that. I actually have a little bald spot on the back of my head where the hair is thinned out. About as big as a half dollar. Yes, I can see it clearly. My, my. What's this in front of me? Hanging down from... From where? Where? From the ceiling? From the roof? From the sky? Is it a ribbon? A rope? A string? It's 
Very lovely. It's the color of... of moonlight. What's that? Smoke. Smoke from that cigarette she's smoking out in the hall. No. No. It's rising straight up from where I'm lying. It's mist, fog, haze. So delicate, so fine, like a cobweb. And the silver string falls through it. And I'm rising through the mist, along the silver string, rising, floating above everything, and looking down. Who is that? Who is that woman down there? She's lying on a bed so still, hardly breathing. So pale, so quiet, so thin, so wasted. What? It's myself. That's Laura Burton lying there. I've been sick for a long time. That's why I look so worn. So exhausted. Oh, poor Laura. Poor Laura. I don't like to leave you, but I must. I must. Feel the wind. Oh, feel the wind. I'm traveling very fast, and the wind is very strong. And I'm traveling with it. And I'm flying with it. I'm as fast as the wind, and I... I am the wind. The wind is me, and I am the wind. But the darkness, the deep, impenetrable darkness, like a starless night on a country road and no moon, no darker than that. A deep well, deep as the earth is deep. No, a tunnel, a long tube of some sort that stretches on and on, endlessly on, black as ink, as coal, as pitch. But wait, wait, look there, look, look there, a light, a tiny little light, and I'm flying toward it. Straight on, so fast. Oh, so eager am I to reach that light. I come closer and closer, so fast and faster and faster. And I'm here. I'm here. Oh, how lovely it all is. How beautiful, how tranquil. Here is all the peace and rest I shall ever need or want. Where am I? Can this be paradise? There are flowers. See the flowers. Smell the flowers. And the golden light. It's not the sun. I see no sun. Only a shimmer of golden light. Oh, that poor woman. The one I left lying on her back in bed. Laura Burton. Wasn't that her name? I'd nearly forgot her. There she is, poor thing. So tired. So ill. The door is opening. Someone's coming into the room. Someone is crossing over to the bed where Laura Burton is lying. Well, now, everything all right? There wasn't any mail. Have you been a good girl while I was downstairs? Mrs. Burton, can't you hear me? I can't feel your pulse. I, I can't feel a thing. Oh, oh, good Lord, that this should happen to me. I'll get your husband. I I'll, I'll call the doctor. What a fuss. There she goes scurrying out of the room, running down the stairs. Up, oh, she almost fell. No, 
She's all right. She's knocking on the door. Yes, that's Robert's study. And there's Robert sitting at his desk. Come in. M- Mr. Burton, you better come upstairs. Why, something wrong? Mrs. Burton? Uh, I came downstairs just now to check and see if there was any mail. I was only out of the room for a minute or two. When I got back, well, I couldn't find her pulse. What? But maybe it's just very weak. It's been very weak for quite a while now, you know. Are you trying to tell me my wife... No, no, I don't mean she's dead. Nothing like that. Anyway, I I, I don't think she is. It's, uh, it's, it's more like she... She blacked out or something. I'm going up to her. Get on the phone and call Dr. Treadway. Get him over here right away. What was the matter with me? Was I ill? Did I have pain? Did I suffer? I can't remember anything. Still, there must have been something. Robert looks so concerned, so unhappy. He looks frantic. Laura... Laura's sweetheart, the nurse just told me. She said you weren't well. She's calling the doctor, darling. He'll be here any minute now. He'll give you something. He'll know what to do. Because I don't know, Laura. I'd do anything, only I don't know what the, what the right thing is. I just don't know. Oh, Robert, don't cry. Please don't cry. You shouldn't cry, dearest, if you could only understand how happy I am, how peaceful I feel. You wouldn't cry. I wish I could tell you, but I can't. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. If you could... Oh, the nurse is called Dr. Treadway. Yes, he's coming out of his house. He's getting into his car. His wife is standing on the porch and he's shouting something at her. Tell them anything, Stella. Tell them to wait or tell them to come back tomorrow. This is an emergency. Can't you get that through your head? It's Laura Burton. Her nurse just phoned. Says she's unconscious or something. No response at all. She's my patient, Stella. I've got to go to her. I don't know when I'll be back. Mr. Burton. Yes, miss. The doctor's on his way. Good, good, that's good. His wife called, said he rushed right out. Good. Good. How, how does she seem to you? I don't understand it at all. Her eyes are wide open, but she doesn't seem to see anything. Uh, Mr. Burton, uh, is there anybody else you want me to call? What? Well, there's a daughter, isn't there? Uh, you and Mrs. Burton have a daughter, am I right? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Susan. Does she live nearby? Uh, yes. Do you want me to call her? Well, I don't know. I, I sup- uh, Perhaps... I mean, well, just in case, you know. Yes, I, uh, well, I, I don't know what... I... Well, I don't want to alarm you or anything, but, well, you know... Look, her phone number is in Mrs. Burton's little book, the one over there. Yes. I, I guess maybe you had better call her. Oh, just in case, you know. You'll find it under the bees. Susan Burton. Okay. Uh, I, I think it's best. I mean, just in case. Darling, you, you would want to see Susan, wouldn't you? Of course you would. I mean, no matter what happened before, you'd want to see our daughter. And when Susan gets here, you'll feel better. Believe me, the doctor will give you something. And and when Susan gets here, everything will be all right. You'll see, my love. My dear love, my sweet one, you'll see. Everything will be all right. Uh, There's no answer, Mr. Burton. What? Your your daughter's phone doesn't answer. Oh. Well, Well, try again. Later. Of course, Susan's phone doesn't answer. Susan's not there. And there's no use calling back later. She isn't there. Our birth is but a sleep and a forgetting. The soul that rises with us, our life's star, hath had elsewhere its setting, and cometh from afar. Not in entire forgetfulness, and not in utter nakedness, but trailing clouds of glory do we come from God, who is our home. Those lines were written by a man who has been dead for more than a century and a quarter. They are taken from his ode on immortality, 
and very likely nothing better has been written since on the subject. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Dying is something we'd rather not think about. We watch it on television. We read reports of it in newspapers. We hear about it over the radio. And our equanimity is only momentarily disturbed. But when it comes to thinking of one's own demise, the immediate, the instinctual response is, oh, not just yet, and oh, please, not altogether. There goes Dr. Treadway in his battered old car, his jaw set and his forehead furrowed. He's going too fast, but his hands are steady on the wheel. See, Robert. He seems to be... Yes, he's crying. Holding one of my poor arthritic hands and his tears are falling down on it. And that absurd nurse standing by the window watching for Dr. Treadway, I suppose. Really, I can't bear to watch them when I'm so free, so young, so alive. The doctor ought to be here any minute. Oh, I'm sure he will be. Well, he lives nearby. It's uh, only a couple of miles, maybe less. Her hand is so cold. Mr. Burton, suppose I try and reach your daughter again. What do you think? What? What, what did you say? I said, maybe I ought to call your daughter again. There wasn't any answer before. Oh. Yes, do that. Call Susan. Okay. That's the doctor. Oh, uh, hello. Uh, hold on. Hello? Never mind. I'll let him in. Oh, hello. Uh, may I speak with Miss Susan Burton, please? Oh? Susan Burton. I'm calling for her father. There's no Susan Burton here. Are you sure? She moved out. Well, can you tell me where she moved to? No idea. It's quite important. Hello? Hello? Oh, you got here fast, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Treadway. That's all right. Have a look at her. Hello. Oh, dear. How long has she been like this? Not very long. Just just for a few minutes, my nurse. Oh, not long. I, I went down to check on the mail. I thought she was asleep. When I came back, her eyes were open, but I couldn't get any response. Her eyes are closed now. They are? They, they weren't before. I, I came up when the nurse told me just, just before we called you. They were wide open then. But she didn't seem to be looking at anything. They're closed now. Is that good, Doctor? Is that a good sign? I don't know. Could be. W what are you doing? Giving her an injection. What can I do? Keep quiet and wait. That's what I'm going to do. Did I feel that little needle go into my arm? Or do I just think I felt it because I saw him do it? How worried they all look. How troubled. I'd like to help them, but I can't. I have other things to do. Drifting in this golden light. Smelling the flowers. Listening to the music. and Looking. Searching. For what? For something. For someone. Yes. There's someone here I want to find. Oh. Oh, yes. There she is. My mother. My lovely mother, all dressed in white. Why, it's the dress we buried her in. Oh, white lace. Mother. Mother, I'm here. I'm Laura. I've come to be with you. Oh, Mother, don't. Don't back off. I'm your little girl. I've come to be with you. Don't back away from me. Is anything happening, Doctor? Not yet. Well, shouldn't she begin to react to something? Just be patient. There ought to be some kind of response to the injection, shouldn't there? Look, why don't you find something to do? I can't. I can't do anything until I know. You'll know when I know. M Mr. Burton... 
I think I ought to tell you. I, I called your daughter. I, I called the number that was in the little book. Yes, you talked to Susan? Well, no. Uh, a man answered the phone and, and said she didn't live there. He said she moved out. Moved? Where, where to? Where did she move to? I asked him that, and he said he had no idea. Then he hung up. Oh, Lord. Is that your daughter you're talking about? Yes. It's Susan. We've been trying to reach her. We... We thought maybe she ought to be here. Probably she should. The nurse called the number that she gave us when she when she went away, you know. But uh, it seems she's moved out of that mm -hmm. place. Why do? They didn't know. Don't you know? No, I'm afraid we don't. No. We don't know. Mother, don't back away from me. Please don't. Aren't you glad to see me? I thought you would be. Wait, wait. Let me see you. Oh, you are so beautiful in your white lace. So young, so graceful. Like a girl all in white. Mother, wait. You're not wearing the pearls. Don't you remember? I gave Father the pearls to put around your neck. Where are they? What is that around your neck? Mother, what is it? You don't know where Susan is living? Well, I thought the number she left us... Uh, well, that was about six months ago. Now she's moved. That's what the man said. And you don't know where? Well, Susan left home, Doctor, very suddenly. She was only 16. She... She wanted to live her own life. And go her own way. Get it all together. That, that, that's what she said. Mm-hmm. Young people talk that way these days. I think I know what they mean. Some of the time. Laura tried to understand. I mean, when... You know, when she and I were Susan's age, we never thought of moving away from our parents at 16. We, we went to college. We stayed home. We didn't... Just leave. I mean, it wouldn't have been in our heads to, to just leave. We called her a few times, but she always said she was busy, very busy. Mm, getting it all together. Yeah, something like that. Not together enough to tell you where she moved. No. So there's no way to reach her. No way at all. What are they saying, no way to reach Susan? I can see her. Right there. She's right there in that little room. She's pressing something. Oh, my, there's hardly room for the ironing board in that tiny room. Now she's stopping. She looks so thoughtful. My little girl. And she's putting down the iron. She's waiting. Now she's going over to the telephone. Hello. Bill. This is Susan. Oh, hi, Susan. How are you? All right. How are you? No, oh, fine. Bill, I, I need to borrow your car. Oh? I really need it. You mean now? Right now. You're not using it, are you? Well, not right this minute. I'll I'm get not... it back to you. When? I I, I don't know exactly, but, but pretty soon. Well, what do you need it for? Not that I mind. I have to go see my mother. Your mother? Well, I, I thought you weren't speaking to your mother. I wasn't. But she just spoke to me. What do you mean? Is she there? Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> Which? I, 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 I got a message from her. Oh, she her. called you? Sort of. Look, can I use your car or not? Well, I thought she didn't even have your number. Can I have your car or not? Well, I, I guess so, yeah. Sure. Thanks. I'll be right over. Mother? Mother, she wants to see me. Imagine Susan really wants to see me. She's putting on her coat now. Her pretty red coat we gave her for her 16th birthday. I remember picking it out. I remember how pleased she was when we gave it to her. There she goes down the walk. Oh, she's walking fast, hurrying. Oh, Mother. My little girl wants to see me. But... I don't want her to see me all thin and pale and sick. No. I want to stay here. To live here. 
to be with you, with my own mother, where everything is beautiful without pain or hurt or longing or being dissatisfied. Mother, I'm tired of the pain and hurt. It's too much. Mother, let me be with you, please. Oh, please. Is anything happening, Doctor? Not yet. Well, how long will it be before we know something? I don't know. You must know something. I do know something. But I don't know everything. Well, tell me what you do know, then. It's only a guess. Tell me what you guess, then. It could be a hypnagogic state, I suppose. What's that? Condition halfway between sleeping and waking. Generally speaking, hallucinatory. It's going on too long. Is that bad? Is it dangerous? I'm inclined to think she's in a coma. A coma? That's very bad, isn't it? It's not good. Well, can't you do something? I've already done everything I can do. But good Lord, man. Coma's a state of insensibility. Very deep, very profound. She could be in a comatose sleep. Well, what do we do? Would we just stand here and wait? That's about it. Probably you've never heard of a coma vigil. No. That's what it consists of. Waiting. And watching. So we'll just stand here. And wait. And watch. We keep vigil. Oh, Mother, I love them so. But I want to be here. I want to be with you. I don't want to be hurt anymore. I don't want to feel lost anymore or despised or neglected. I don't want any of those bad feelings. I don't want to be angry or mean or vengeful. I want to be good. And kind and feel loving and loved. Oh, Mother, I want to be happy. Happy all the time and forever. Show me how. Let me come close to you and tell me how. But there's Susan. She's stopping at a big white house. There's a little car standing in front of the house. And there's a man leaning out of one of the windows... Susan's voice and his come floating up to me ever so faintly. Keys are in the car, Susan. Thanks, Bill. She's getting into the little car. She's driving off. Oh, Mother, what do I do now? Tell me. Let me come close to you and hold me in your arms the way you once did. And I will stay with you forever and we will always be together and never, never again will I... Is that what I'll do? Or will I? What will I do? Mother? Oh, Mother, don't do that. You're holding up your hands. You're waving me away. You don't want me. You're telling me, go back. Go back. I cannot prove to you that anything like this ever occurred to Laura Burton or to any other woman or any man or any child any more than I or anyone can prove that there can ever be peace in the world, that mankind is inherently good, nature kindly disposed, science infallible, or any sort of utopia possible. Such things are beyond proof. They belong to the realm of faith or perhaps only hope. But both the hope and the faith are strong. I'll be back with our final act shortly. Are we all just bodies, collections of bones and muscles and arteries, or do we have two, the physical body and the soul body? And if we have two bodies, can the one desert the other before death and then return to its original habitation? 
and during its temporary abandonment, see and hear what transpires around the physical, even observe the appearance of the physical body itself. Is this really possible? Or should it be relegated to the category of hallucination? Mother, what is it? Don't you want me? I thought of all the times I'd been unkind and unfeeling. And how you'd never be around for me to say I'm sorry. I want to say it now. I want to tell you that I didn't understand and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you won't let me come close to you. You keep backing away and holding up your hands with your palms toward me. Mother... Are you telling me you don't want me? Dr. Treadway, how long can this go on? I don't know. You must have some idea. I don't. Well, can't you even hazard a guess? I won't hold you to it. I give you my word. But it's unbearable just waiting like this. You can bear it. Tell me what you think. At least tell me that. I think... I think if we don't get a reaction pretty soon, sometime during the next few minutes, we'll have lost her. Oh, my wife. However, yes. I can always be wrong. It's happened before, probably will again. Mr. Burton? Mr. Burton? Yes, nurse. What is it? There's a car stopping in front of the house. Please don't bother me. A little sports car. Uh, don't bother him, nurse. Sorry, doctor. Something should happen soon. Just hold on. I'll try. I know you are. What's that? Just the doorbell. Oh, please. Go away. Go away. You want me to go see who it is? I don't care who it is. I don't care about anything. They're not going to go away. Please, go down and tell them. Just get rid of them, whoever it is. Doctor? Yes, do that, nurse. What shall I say? Oh, tell them that there's a woman dying here. Mr. Burton, I'll, I'll, take it easy. I'll tell them something. But it's Susan, Robert. It's Susan. Don't you know that? Susan's come back. She's come home. She was pressing a dress. I saw her standing in a tiny little room pressing a dress. I saw her. And I saw her look up as though she'd heard something or seen something. And she put down the iron. And she went to the telephone. And she called a man. His name was Bill. And she asked if she could borrow his car. He said, what for? And she said, I heard her. She said, I have to go and see my mother. Me, Robert. She wanted to see me. Don't you know that? I think I can detect a pulse. You can? It's very faint. But, but it is a pulse, is that right? Yeah. Uh, let me have that stethoscope right there. Yes. Yeah. Here. Here. Thanks. Well? Very slow. Very slower. There's a beat. You want to listen? Yes. Yes, yeah. here. Stick these in your ears. Yeah. Hear it? I hear it. I hear it. Good Lord, I hear it. Right now. She's alive, Doctor. That means she's alive. Yes. It means she's alive. Oh, Laura. Laura, speak to me, darling. Please, speak to me. She, she won't speak. She can't. Why not? Because she's not conscious. Doctor, Doctor, look, look, look. What is it? Her hand moved, Doctor. It did, it moved, I swear. It did. Didn't you see it? It moved. I was holding her hand. I thought maybe I was holding too tightly, and I started to let go, and her fingers closed on my hand. They did, I swear they did. Now, that means something, doesn't it? Maybe it does. Maybe not. Could be just a reflex action. Those things happen. But I felt it, I tell you. I felt her fingers close on my hand as though she didn't want to let go. Tell me it means something. Doctor. Daddy. What? Who are you? It's Susan, Daddy. Huh? D don't you know me? Susan? Yes, Daddy. What are you doing here? How did you get here? I came to see Mother. Your mother's very ill, Susan. Well, she, she's not... No, no she, she's not dead, but she may be dying. Oh, Mother. Wait a minute. What is it? Look at her eyelids. Susan, come over here. Stand next to the bed. Oh. Now, watch your eyelids. Well, they're, they're, they're moving, kind of. They're not opening. They're just, just sort of flickering. She's dreaming. How do you know that? Those flickerings, as you call them, are, are what we call rapid eye movements. 
beneath her lids. Her eyes are moving, flickering back and forth. But why? Why are they? Because she's seeing things. She's dreaming. Yes, I think we can all relax a little now. She's not going to die. Goodbye, Mother. I want to stay with you, but you don't want me to. You want me to go back, don't you? Oh, yes. I see you smile. And you're nodding your head. You mean yes. Go back. Go back. Oh, Mother. The truth is, I want to go back. I really do. Back to all the pain, all the sadness, all the things that go wrong. Yes, I want to go back to all that. I'll take all of it, Mother. I'll take it all. The moments of joy, too, Mother. The little moments filled with sunlight. The soft moments of being content. The few hours when things go well. And I feel cherished. It's not that I don't love you, Mother. It's that I... I want... I need... I must go back. My dear... Goodbye. Goodbye. Let's all be very quiet. She's having a hard time. But she's alive. She's alive. Goodbye, Mother. What did she say? She said something. I think she said, goodbye, Mother. What does she mean? Her mother's been dead for ten years. Uh, Let's be quiet. She's opening her eyes. Where is the nurse? What? What, darling? What did she say? Sounded like, where's the nurse? Why would she say that? Doesn't she know us? Why is she asking for the nurse? Uh, Quiet, just be patient. Probably out in the hall smoking a cigarette again. Is she delirious? You can call it that if you want to. Laura, sweetheart, it's Robert. I'm here, I'm right here. Robert? Robert? Oh... Oh, Robert. Yes, darling, it's Robert. And here's Dr. Treadway. Oh, dear doctor, have you been looking after me? Yes, I have. I hope your wife isn't angry with you, doctor. Stella, my wife? (laughs) Angry with me? For running off like that, leaving all those patients in the waiting room? Oh, Oh, I don't think she's angry with me. Not now, anyway. Good. Good, I'm glad. How are you feeling, Laura? Why, I'm all right, I think. You've been a pretty sick little lady. Have I? We were so worried about you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, don't be sorry. As long as you're all right now. I know how awful I look. You don't at all. No, no. There's a little bald spot on the back of my head where the hair's worn off. No, there's not. Oh, yes, there is. You can't see it, but I saw it. It's about the size of a half dollar. What's she talking about? Don't ask her. Just let her talk, say whatever she likes. Don't worry about your hair, darling. It'll grow back, you know, once you're up and around. Oh, I wasn't worried. Sweetheart, there's someone here... Someone you're going to be very surprised to see. Susan? Yes. Oh. Susan. She just got here a few minutes ago. Hello, Mother. Oh, Susan, I'm so happy you're here. Oh, I had to see you, Mother. I had to see my mother, too. But she looked young and pretty, not the way I do. You know? She had on that white lace dress, the one she was buried in. I picked it out myself, but she wasn't wearing the pearls. She had a little locket around her neck. I couldn't understand that. A little gold locket. 
But Grandma was was buried with that little locket around her neck. Don't you remember? I asked Grandpa to put it around her neck because it had a, a picture of me in it. And he did. Well, maybe he never told me. I guess he never did. Anyway, Mother didn't want me to stay with her. And after a while, I didn't want to either. I wanted to come back here and be with all of you. And here you are. You're back. Yes, you're back with us. Well, I think that's enough talking for a while. Oh, Dr. Trevor. Now, your mother's had a hard time of it, Susan. Can't we just sit by her bed? She needs a lot of good, solid sleep. You think you could sleep for a while, Mrs. Burton? Oh, yes. Fine. That's just fine. I'll send the nurse in. Come on, everybody. Let's clear out of here. Uh, Susan, I have to ask you something. Yes, Mother. Did you remember to unplug the iron? Of course, you know that what we have attempted to dramatize for you is an out-of-the-body experience, commonly called astral projection. I, myself, have never had such an experience, and I cannot promise you that the dramatization is accurate. But people who have experienced it say that in most respects, it is. I'll be back shortly. Hundreds of people had given testimony as to their out-of-the-body experiences. People of sober intellect and firm character. And the significant thing about their testimonies is that they so closely resemble one another. Under the right conditions, given sufficient receptivity, any one of us could be the next to leave the body for a time and return. Anyway... It's interesting to think so, isn't it? Our cast included Terry Keene, Mandel Kramer, Martha Greenhouse, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. We love each other, Your Majesty. Nani's happiness lies with me. You are not of our blood. Majesty, Prince's mother, whatever I should call you... What are all these ancient prejudices? It's a new world. And and blood crosses blood and makes the ties that bind everyone together stronger. We're one world today. I cannot cross my gods. I cannot protect you. Most of all, I cannot protect my daughter. The Tylatus has pointed the bone. If you... And Noelani should try to find life together. You are doomed. The gods have spoken. Your gods, maybe. Not mine. It looks as though we'll just have to find out which is stronger. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.